With over 100 million people worldwide identifying as being descendants of the ancient lost tribes of Israel, Rabbi Harry Rosenberg has launched a new educational platform, WokeCourses.com, providing courses on this and many other very important and interesting topics. And we're very happy to be joined once again by Rabbi Harry from Jerusalem. Hello and welcome back, my friend. Hey, thanks so much for having me back. It's a real honor to be here with you. Oh, well, thank you very much. Listen, you're doing such amazing work, and, and you know, the story just keeps getting deeper and deeper and deeper every time we approach this topic. And I wanted to kind of start, um, you know, we're, we're talking a lot about the, uh, the Lemba people today. If you could kind of put some light on uh, the connection to the Lemba people specifically, you know, and, and, and the tribes of Israel and, you know, possible genetic links that are shown through a Cohen uh, bloodline. First of all, the Lemba historically has always self-identified as being from the children of Israel. Um, we could discuss which tribe they're going to come from in a second, but just they had reached out to Israel in the early inception of the state. And a lot of people thought that this was a tribe just trying to jump on the bandwagon, as we've discussed in the past, saying, oh, it's so convenient for you to be from the children of Israel now that we have our own state. Um, but then, you know, the researchers, they noticed that there's just a lot of things that the Lemba are doing, unlike other tribes around them, that really resembled most, the law of Moses and other customs, traditions of the Jewish people. So they sent a team of people down there to research them. And one of the people that went was Dr. David Goldstein from Duke. He was a professor. And they did DNA testing on them and showed that 10% or so of the tribe had the Kohane Y chromosome genetic marker which would mean that these people have a population that comes from the descendants of Aaron, the brother of Moses, who was the first of the priestly class. So that was already shocking. Um, and then when we looked, when people looked into it a little more, they realized that they're building their houses and they're doing construction and, and funeral burials, et cetera, in the style of the Yemenite Jewry. And they were able to trace back and show from the Yemenite exile communities that these land became here. So. Um, some people may think that they come from the lost tribes of Israel, uh, quote unquote, the, t the 10 northern tribes, but it would seem they would be there from the Judean exile. Um, you know, this idea, you know, even of the diaspora of the tribes in Israel, really not specifically coming from the northern kingdom, but potentially coming from the Judean, the tribe of, of Judah, correct? And especially, you know, coming from Yemen, which was mainly uh, Judeans as well, correct? Yeah, for sure. And when you really look in, into it, you you would notice that the 10 northern tribes, well, they call it the 10 northern tribes for a reason. The 10 tribes were in the northern half of Israel, and the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, and a little bit of Shimon were on the southern side of Israel. So when you discuss going into exile, uh, it would make sense that the Judeans would have direct access to going into Africa. And, and in fact, we see through historians like Josephus and other historical documents, even in the Tanakh, there were many different waves of Judeans actually going into Africa um, in different periods of time over a 2,000-year period even, including in recent times from the Portuguese Inquisition. Right. So, yeah, it is definitely interesting, as you said. I also want to address something very interesting that a lot of people are claiming, you know, you know, all over, over you know, the world during this time of the, the you know, ingathering of the exiles is mentioning even Moses and the wife of Moses, you know, referred to in Hebrew as, a, you know, Kushi, which is referred to as Ethiopian, or, or black. Can you kind of rectify? Because I know that they, you know, explain. Because the midrash, the oral Torah, kind of gets into that whole idea a little bit. If you could expand on that. Well, first, this just seems like a glaring contradiction because um, it refers to her as a Kushite, and we know she was the daughter of a Midianite priest, and they were Midianites. So was she one or was she the other? And the commentators come in to help us based on what they've what they've received from the transmission all the way from Moses, that indeed she was a or she was a Midianite. They refer to her as a Kushite because that was the a term used to describe someone of beauty. And there was a commentator who had said that this is what they would have said to any of the Ethiopians that they had that beauty. So, um, so this term was, I guess, Ethiopians were. Good looking back then. They're they're good looking today. I guess I'm not the I'm not the judge for that. You know, I got a, a big red beard growing. They up are face beautiful funny people. Looking. Uh, exactly. So so that term was used to describe Moses's wife, and she was dark skinned. Um, some people say because the verse went out of its way to teach you she was dark skinned, it must mean that the other Israelites were not dark skinned. But that's not what it's coming to say. It's coming to say she was just an extremely beautiful human. 
Um, why was why was that an issue for the Israelites to use that term? Why why did they throw it in there? I'm not so sure, but we do know that uh, there's a Mishnah that was very clear in uh, Mishnah Nagaim. It says the children of Israel were not black or dark skinned, and they were not white. They were not white skinned like light skinned like myself, but they were this box with this in between color. Rabbi Harry, thank you. I know this is uh, the second of many more to come. So much more to talk about. So uh, next time we'll see you back here. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward. Thank you. Thank you for doing great work.